Hey guys, we're going to have a real fun project here. It's one that a lot of you uh, actually kind of figured out how to do in class already. And it is to make this Turner cube. It's a pretty simple little thing. You should be able to finish it pretty easily today. All right. And if I kind of look at this Turner cube, here's what it's going to look like uh, when you're finished. Uh, and I'll kind of zoom around a little bit here or adjust my angle. You can see that I have a cube inside of a cube inside of a cube, inside of a cube, and this is gonna be really neat. We're gonna get one of our machines, our five axis CNC machine, to kind of carve this out of a, a block of wood for us. Uh, so we'll see what those look like when those are all done. All right, it's a really neat little project here. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to design it, and then later we'll talk about how to set it up for manufacturing. So let's uh, go ahead and get into this. All right, I'm just gonna close the tab out for that. and I'm not gonna save any changes. I don't need to save any. All right, uh, let's go ahead and what I want you to do is start right here in your data panel in Fusion 360, okay? And if you don't see the uh, home screen, uh, like if you're in a project already, go ahead and click home and you're going to click new project. Uh, let's go ahead and call it Turner Cube. I'm going to not really create that project because I already have a project called Turner Cube. So I'll just hit escape. So you can see I have my Turner Cube project. I'll be in my Turner Cube project now after you create that project. And we ha should have a blank design file over here. Let's go ahead and just save that file into our Turner Cube project. So click the save up at the top there and just call it Turner Cube for its name. And hop down here to your location and scroll through your projects until you find the Turner Cube project and click Save. All right, and over here you will see the Turner Cube in there. Now let's go ahead and start designing it. Okay. Uh, you don't have to use the exact planes that I do. I think it'd be helpful though, uh, just so on all the steps that I take, you can repeat what I do exactly. It'll make it a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and, and get going here. I'm going to click my home button here, make sure I'm in home. Uh, I'm gonna look at my view cube already. So like this front face, I can tell is the uh, on the XY plane. And like the bottom of my cube, I can't see that. That's on my ZX plane. And then the left and right side of my cube, those are kind of ZY plane faces. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, I'll close my data panel so I have a little bit more real estate. And the very first thing, uh, like I almost always do in Fusion 360, is I start off with a sketch. So I'll go ahead and start a sketch. I'll turn on my origins folder. I always like to be able to see that and I'll open it up so that I can hand pick my plane. I want to put that on just uh, the very bottom. So looking at my uh, view cube over here, I can see the bottom is ZX. So I'll choose the ZX plane or the XZ plane. They're the same thing over here uh, for my origin, or I can choose it from over here. I always like to choose it in my origins folder. I know what I'm getting that way. So I chose my XZ plane. Uh, I'll go from a straight top down view. All right. The dimensions for this thing are going to be 50 millimeters wide by 50 millimeters tall by 50 millimeters deep. Uh, so that's a cube, right? But what two dimensional object starts out uh, or does a cube start out as? Well, it starts out as a square. And I want the square uh, to the center of the square. I want that to be the origin. So before we've used the two-point rectangle and started it at the origin maybe, this time that's not going to be very good for us because that would only put one of the corners in the origin. Now I want the very center of my square in the origin. So what I'll do is I'll go down to create and I'll go to my rectangle menu and I am now going to choose the center rectangle because that starts the rectangle right in the middle. So I'll click right there on the origin with my center rectangle tool 
and I'll drag out a little bit. And now you can see it's going to let me uh, resize it. As always, I always prefer to type instead of trying to drag and find exactly. So we know that this is going to be 50 tall. And then I'll hit tab, just like we've always done, and type in 50 wide. Then I'll hit enter. And now I have a square that's 50 wide and 50 tall. And the center of the square is the origin. Okay, I'm done with this thing. I'll click finish sketch. All right, if I go and I look, I have a nice square now. Uh, now we're going to make this a 3D object. And just like we've done in the past, we will use our extrude tool, which is also E on the keyboard, to make this a 3D object. So the profile I'll select right here is the square that we just made. And I want the origin to stay in the center of my cube. So if I do a one-sided uh, extrude like it is set up right now, if, and I'll show you that, I'll extrude it on one side, you can see that the origin's just on the bottom. It's not in the middle of my cube. So I'll go ahead and select a symmetric extrude. That means whatever I do to one side happens to the other side. That essentially keeps that square that we made in the sketch right in the middle of my cube. That means the origin is always going to be in the middle of the cube. So uh, we know it's 50 wide, 50 deep. So let's go ahead and type in 50 and make it 50 tall. Now that's a little weird because I have half length turned on here. That means from the middle to the edge is 50. Let's turn on whole length so that there we go that from end to end instead of middle to end is 50. All right, and we'll make sure that it says new body. And that's good, I'll click OK. And now I have a 50 by 50 by 50 cube. Remember guys, you can pause this video at any time to go back and repeat what I'm doing in your own Fusion 360. Okay, so I have a nice cube. Uh, I'm just going to select any face of this cube to draw a new sketch on. So let's just go ahead and look at that top face, okay, which is this one right here. I'm going to click create a new sketch. I'm not going to put that sketch on one of the planes. This time I'm going to put it on the face of the cube. So if I tilt it back a little bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it right to that top of that cube. All right, and if I scoot it back a little bit, you can see the plane Yeah, is right there, or the sketch plane is right there on top of the cube, okay? And I am going to start out, and I'm just going to draw three circles on this sketch. So I'll hit C for my circle tool. And the first, uh, all three of these circles are going to start right here in the origin. And I'll zoom in. I know I selected the origin because my snap box turns blue, okay? I'm just going to drag out a little bit. I'm going to make my first circle 15 millimeters. And then I'll hit enter. And then I'll hit C again. We're going to draw another circle, and I'm going to make this one a 30 millimeter diameter circle. And my last circle, I'll hit C again, okay, and just kind of drag out, and I'll type in 45, a 45 millimeter diameter circle. So you can see that I have three circles now on my sketch plane. I'll go ahead and zoom fit so I get a little bit better view. And Right now, I don't think I need a sketch one. Okay, that's turned off, that's good. So, our object here then, and I'll finish sketch, is to cut these three holes, or three circles down as holes, onto all six sides of the cube. All right, and you might be looking at that like, oh, well, I know that each one of these is gonna be an extrude, and I have six uh, sides, so that's, oh my gosh, that's 18 extrudes. That's a lot of work. Well, I'm going to show you how to be lazy here. If you're in my class, if you know me, you know I, I enjoy the art of being lazy. And Fusion 360 is great. Uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of art of being lazy built into 360. I'm going to show you one of those uh, great how to be lazy tools. But let's go ahead and just start uh, making some cuts, all right? I know that I want the center one to be the deepest cut. I want this one to be the second deepest cut, that, that middle ring, and then the outer ring to be the most shallow or the least deep cut. 
so let's just kind of, I've played around with these numbers so I know they work. I'm going to extrude. Let's just do our deepest cut first. So that's the one right there in the, the center. I've only selected the one in the center, so I should only have one profile selected over here. And it's going to be a one-sided extrude. And it's not going to be an extrude. We're going to cut down into the cube. Okay, so to do that, I can either select cut from over here, or I could just type in a negative number. So we need to cut this 18 millimeters. So for me, I'm just going to type in for my distance. Oh, hey, I don't know how to turn up my menu there. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to type in my distance negative 18. So negative 18. Okay. And it will give you a preview of what that cut is going to look like. And over here, it automatically switches it to cut. I'll click OK. All right. Now, it looks like my circles disappeared. Well, that's because I just extruded something from that sketch. It, it typically turns off by default. So over here, I'm going to find the sketch that the circles live on, and I'll turn it back on so I can finish the rest of my extrudes. Okay. I will go and we'll do another extrude, and this time we're going to extrude this profile. And it shouldn't be as deep, so I will make this one negative 12. And that's all I need here. I'll hit enter. And then the last one is going to be this profile. I'll select it and do extrude. And then now I'm going to do, I hope you've seen the pattern, 18, 12. If you guessed 6, you're in the money. So I'll, I'll do a cut of 6, hit enter. And I have a kind of like stairs stepping down into the middle. I'll turn off this sketch so you can get a little bit better look. So there's my first extrude, there's my second extrude, and there's my third extrude. Now, instead of like repeating that all the way across the cube, I'm going to show you maybe a new tool to use. And that's over here under Create. And then in the Pattern menu, I have the Circular Pattern. So circular pattern is really great. It can take um, uh, some face of an object or it can take the whole object itself or it can be part of an object like an extrude or what we call a feature and it can take those things and wrap it around uh, an object or a lot of different objects. So it's really helpful. Uh, it makes things go very quickly because a lot of things we de design kind of have a symmetry to them. So uh, anytime we have a symmetry, uh, we can use this tool uh, a lot. So the things that I'm going to wrap around this cube are those extrusions that we just did. So I'm going to make sure first that the type of thing that we're using in a circular pattern is a feature, not a face or a body. So I'll select features. And then the objects, right? When this is blue and it wants me to select objects, I'm going to select the three extrudes that I just uh, did down here from my timeline. They'll turn blue in my high, uh, timeline to show that they're highlighted. And then over here it says, I should say I have three features selected, okay? Now, this is going to be the part uh, that you have to think a little bit about. Okay, It's going to rotate these around an axis, just like our Revolve tool has done before. Okay, So I want this to go around this uh, the cube next. So that means I want it to put it on this right face, and then on the bottom face over here, and then the left face. So if I look at my axes here in the middle of the cube, I, Right? I got to think which of these three axes would allow it to kind of spin around in this direction like my mouse is going right now. And if I look and I kind of keep going in that circle, you can see that this blue axis, my Z axis, is the one that allows us to do that. So I can either, if I can, click on the axis uh, right here uh, in the design or I can go over here. I can. I can choose this axis over here. Now, you could also have drawn a line, and you could select that line as your axis too. But that's for a story for a later day. We don't need to do that right now. Let me click Z, and yep, it will give me a preview. So it pops up this number here. That means 
quantity. How many times is it going to make a copy of it? So I know that going around this part of the cube, I have four faces. I have the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. So right now it's set to three. I'm going to set it to four. Some of you might be thinking, well, haven't we already done the top? Yes, we have done the top, but we still need to count it as a face so that everything uh, lines up perfectly. Yes, we will extrude uh, in a place that's already been extruded, but that won't do anything. It won't hurt us, it won't help us because it's already been extruded. So I'll click OK, and it might take it a second or two. Oh, sorry, one thing I forgot to show you. I'm going to right click on, on that circle pattern that I just did. I'm going to go to edit. I want to make sure that my compute option is it optimized, right? That, that usually is what we want to select for these. Okay. I'll go ahead and click okay. And you can see that it did those extrusions on just like we predicted on the right, on the bottom, on the left and on the top. Okay. Now we only have two sides of this thing that don't have uh, that extrusion. So what we can do is we can use that same circle tool and this time choose a different axis to wrap it around the other sides. So let's go over here uh, and go back into create, uh, go back into pattern and select circle pattern again. All right, the features that I want to circle pattern again are the three extrudes that we originally did. So I'll select one, two, three, and you can see they're right here on the top. Now, I've got to wrap it towards me, so it should come to the front, to the bottom, to the back, and to the top. So what axis is going to kind of wrap around that way? Well, that's going to be this red axis. So I'll go over here to axis, I'll click on that, and I'll select this red one. Eh, well, I want to make sure I select the right thing. So that red axis is X. I'll go over here to my origins folder, and I will click X. Again, it's set to three, I'll up it to four. And yeah, you can see it's trying to put it on this surface right here. I'll click OK. And there we go. That is a complete Turner cube. Pretty neat uh, thing. It's real impressive to look at and it's pretty simple to design. All right, thanks guys. I uh, hope this was helpful and we will see you later.